Let's get scratching. <laughs> Hi there, welcome to episode 157 of the Wave Back Music Podcast. My name is Chris. And I'm Matt. And we're here to listen to the most interesting video game music there is. The Dreamcast may not have lasted as long on the market as both Sega and their fans would have hoped, but it was home to some incredibly inventive stuff and arguably represented Sega at the height of their game in terms of individuality. From Sonic Adventure to Seaman to Shenmue to Toy Commander, the Dreamcast had some all-time classics grace its humble disk drive, and today's game is no different. Grab your spray cans, because tonight we listen to the music of Jet Grind Radio for the Sega Dreamcast. Well, hello, Matt. Hello, Chris. How the bloody heck are ya? <laughs> I'm bloody well. How are you? I am living the dream. Clearly. I just ate a... This is a thing that I didn't know existed, and I, I, I looked at it and I thought, this is walking a fine line between genius and insanity. I ate a Reese's Big Cup with Reese's Puffs cereal in it. Huh. I had uh, a Reese's uh, peanut butter cup with Reese's Pieces in it once. Those are delicious. I have a little They're unnecessary, you know. Because like that just you don't really get the taste of that candy shell in there. It's just like, okay, it's just got a little crunch. But I've been seeing these out there with like, oh, this one's got potato chips in it. This one's yep. got pretzels in it. And like, all right, I that's the, cool. The one with the pretzels is pretty good. Honestly, you know, I bet my it favorite, is my favorite like so far. A, a good take five. But this one with the Reese's yes. Puff cereal, that was actually a pretty genius move. All right, I'll have to uh, keep an eye out for that. Yeah, it was uh, not so bad, not so bad. But anyway, we're here to talk about Jet Grind Radio. Um, we're actually uh, a little peek behind the curtain here. We're doing a, we're attempting to do a double header right now. We're going to do this and turning tracks back to back. So let's get to work, shall we? Yes, yes, yes. This was a patron, a patron listener request episode from Duroc Pig, and one that's genuinely exciting to me. So thanks for bringing this one to the forefront, there, Duroc Pig. We've definitely got some ground to cover here. So Matt, yes, sir, hit us with some history. Certainly. Jet Set Radio was released in Japan on June 29, 2000, and came to the U.S. Dreamcast on Halloween the same year under the name Jet Grind Radio. Word is the reason for the new name was a combination of potential trademark issues regarding the term Jet Set and an attempt to capitalize on the popularity of the skateboarding game genre by tossing the word Grind into the title. The game exuded an undeniable sense of cool and was the first widespread video game released to utilize cell shading, a technique that allowed polygons to resemble traditional two-dimensional animation. The game revolves around a group of kids eluding the law and spray painting graffiti all over the open world map. It wasn't exactly a sales juggernaut, but it quickly earned a cult following for its counterculture attitude and, of course, its fantastic soundtrack. Jet Grind Radio's soundtrack consists of a combination of original tunes and a handful of licensed songs, including, yes, Rob Zombie's Dragula. <laughs> the primary composer for the game was Hideki Naganuma, whose previous works include Sega Rally 2, Sonic Rush, and this game's sequel, Jet Set Radio Future. Matt, do you have any personal history with this game? I actually do. Um, growing up, I had a friend who had the uh, Dreamcast, and... We, I remember we wanted to play like every game that came out for this system. So we, we hunted everything down from like the local blockbuster and, you know, used, um, used game shops and stuff. But, um, I think Jet, uh, Jet Grind Radio was one of those games that, uh, we played a lot more than I think a lot of other games because it was cool. It had a great art style, right? This, um, mm -hmm. you know, the, uh, shell shade, uh, cell shading. Hello, <laughs> you would think I was the one that was running around with my head on. Um, uh, yeah, it was just a lot of fun, and it it did kind of have some elements uh, reminiscent of like the Tony Hawk Pro Skater uh, and stuff like that. Um, that kind of like open worlds, you know, do some tricks, and, and you know when you're when you're at that age i you know was approximately 20 1920 i still was very anti-establishment like eh, yeah let's let's graffiti stuff but i'm too much of a goody two-shoes to actually go out and graffiti stuff so this um <laughs> this this felt very safely rebellious um 
A lot of fun, though. I, I do remember the soundtrack being very awesome and like, um, uh, what's the word? Very complimentary to the actual gameplay itself. So I, I was a big fan of this game, actually. Awesome. Yeah, I'm I'm also a big fan of this game. I played uh, the heck of it when it first came out. I was working at Funko Land uh, during a lot of the Dreamcast tenure, and I remember this came out and just being so enamored with the cell shading. I thought it was the coolest looking thing I'd ever seen. And uh, I've, I just had a blast playing this game, but it's been years. Mm-hmm. I, I can't. I don't think I've played it since the year it came out. So it's, I don't remember most of, of the game. I just remember having a really good time with it. I liked the, um, this was also, I think one of the first times I ever remember seeing, uh, quick time elements, right? With the, the graffiti, you'd have to like, to draw things, it'd be like, press this, you know, do this motion, do this motion, do this motion, um, which are super common in action games today, like Uncharted and God of War and stuff. You just go into these QTEs. And I think this was also the first time I'd ever seen that in a game. And I thought it was really clever because it felt, you know, obviously you're not moving a cursor around on the screen literally drawing stuff, but it made you feel more connected to the spray painting by twist the analog stick this way, twist it this way, and, and that kind of stuff. I thought that was uh, incredibly cool. Uh, and, the, and the game's music also left enough of an impression that I remembered. I thought it was awesome, but I don't remember what any of the music actually sounds like. Yeah. So this is going to be fun. <laughs> like you and I have the exact same experience right this very moment. Nice. Like I remember the soundtrack being awesome. I couldn't. If you put a gun to my head, I couldn't hum a tune. <laughs> I forgot that Dragula was in it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so did I. But the, the, given the year, it doesn't surprise me. <laughs> no, no. Rob, Rob, and White Zombie were very much like that. Uh, that song in particular was like, oh, it was in the Matrix. It's, it, we should put it everywhere. It's everywhere. I'm sure Rob Zombie was just like license away. <laughs> yeah, let the money roll in. It was, it was the it was the more human than human of of Rob Zombie's career. Right. Oh, that's all the rules too. All right. So, considering how long it's been since I've played this game, I have no real concept of where any of the music plays in the game. Nor do I have a true grasp on whether or not I've picked what would be considered the best tracks available. Duroc Pig gave me five to start with, and I just quickly poked around and grabbed whatever caught my ear at the time to fill in the rest. The good news here is there don't seem to be any bad tracks in the entire soundtrack, so I definitely recommend uh, tracking down the entire thing and giving it a full listen uh, if what you hear tonight inspires you to do so. So these first five songs were the ones that Duroc Pig gave, and then the second five songs are the grab bag of songs that either had neat looking names or uh, just the first two seconds enticed me. So that's uh, that's where we're at for tonight's uh, track list. It should be fun. Uh, so our first song is the basically the title screen theme. This is uh, the first song you hear in the game. It's called Let Mom Sleep. And <laughs> this one, as soon as I, I heard the first few seconds of it, I did in fact remember this one. And it is a, it's a pretty snazzy tune so without further ado let's get to work on our first track from jet grind radio for dreamcast let mom sleep enjoy let's look at the funk we just walk by with that right yo yo. I'm trying to get to sleep. <laughs>
is most disturbing. All right, that was Let Mom Sleep, Jack Crank Radio, what a fun <laughs> song. <laughs> oh boy, that was a blast. The, the, all those fun little uh, you know, digital voice samples in there that are kind of sped up to sound all like munchkin-like. I don't know, that it was, it was fun. Good tune. It's a it's a very indicative of like, I, I feel like it's how, how we'll sit here and we'll go, well, oh, you know, this 90s soundtrack is indicative of what you know, composers thought hip hop was or where it was going. I feel like this is, and mock isn't the word, but it almost feels like a mocking version of that, you know, some five to 10 years later in, in the year 2000 or whatever. But um, I think it's actually even more indicative of like the techno um, craze that kind of happened in the early 2000s with uh, like the jungle beat and, um, you know, the samples of the vocals and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really a lot of fun. Like, it's really hard <laughs> to listen to this and not, like, dance it. Oh, my goodness. Excuse me. It's it's really hard not to listen to this and, like, not dance in your seat or something. Or just kind of at least bop your head or something like that, right? Oh, yeah. And maybe a little... I was tapping my tapping my toes along with this. It's a, it's 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 got a good beat. It's got a good groove. It's it's it, 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 you summed it up perfectly. It's fun. It, it was just a really yeah. fun piece of music. Yeah, and it might come across a little hokey or corny or, or what have you, but it's fun. Yeah, I, I don't but it, care it, what it, it it owns it. It's clearly not trying to take itself seriously. You know. Yeah. It, it, yeah, the, yeah. Yeah. The, the inherent goofiness of the 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 vocal clips they put in there. Uh, you know. It's just it's it's there to be fun, and uh, it is successful at doing so. I think. Uh, I'll agree. I'll definitely agree. Cool. Well, then let's move on to track number two. The second Duroc Pig requested song is called "Sneak Man." <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I'm excited. Let's give it a listen. Here's "Sneak Man" from Jet Grind Radio. Enjoy. <laughs> understand what's going on here. Give me a break.
Uh, so this to, this to quote song, Tom Servo, any song with Waka Chawaka in it is fine by me. <laughs> I cannot disagree. This song <laughs> reminds me so much of this song that I absolutely love by the Avalanche. It's called Frontier Frontier Psychology. Um, it's got a very different feel to it, but it's they sample like the exact same, you know, old. Um, I don't know, like videos that again to bring it full circle you would have seen them make fun of on mystery science theater 3000 <laughs> you know like etiquette it's very like all the instrument choices are, are very shaft you know you've got the bongos yes. you've got the, the waka chewaka guitars you've got the, the strings like it's channeling that so well uh, <laughs> i loved this one the bass line was killer this was great. Yeah, it's a, there's a lot of great elements to this. And, and to to point out Shaft is like a, a really good kind of touchstone, you know, for Isaac Hayes. <laughs> great. Because, you know, you look at um, Isaac Hayes' career after Shaft and stuff like that. And, you know, all those films that had those soundtracks, which I just recently found out a lot of the musicians behind those soundtracks were f- like... Earth, Wind, and Fire started that way. I had no idea that Earth, Wind, and Fire started as a soundtrack band before they kind of uh, morphed into, you know, the the big jazz juggernaut, the jazz, the disco-y juggernaut that they are now. Um, yeah, very interesting. Yeah, right. The the whammy, the whammy, the uh, the wah guitar. Yeah, the wah guitar, so indicative and. Yeah, the bongos, the the congas, everything, the, the wacky samples. It's it's just a good time. Our third track of the show is going to be our first licensed song. This is Improvised by Jurassic Five. Woo! Uh, I'm I think I'm unfamiliar with this song, um, but I'm familiar with Jurassic Five. I don't know. We'll we'll see. I don't know any of their names, so I'm going to go ahead and start this track. We're going to listen to Improvise by uh, Jurassic 5 and hope that uh, I, we don't get a, an internet takedown notice for this or anything. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy! It's like this when the law said, let it be like He also designated poetical brothers with mics For whoever had the skills to possess the gift Combinated with the flavor and it go like this Tuna fish Little man, Vivian, citizen with the lesson plan Cashier at the j concession stand I kill the militant steel with the peripheral telegraphic skill Build up force field Mark 7 Fundamentalists bring up my verbal gift My style is packed quick like cocoa and Swiss miss I kill All the way my pen sticks to rhymes Cause the villain party people, it's about that time And together, we show you how to improvise Reminiscing of the wild style 75 Cause it's the brothers on the mic Occupying the drum We're taking four MCs And make it sound like one I'll be the spark from the cannon Blaze the outstanding Tug of war With the poor rich and scandalous Roll, run and bandit Race against advancement Style wins Call storms when I perform I'm a pop a giant robot And stomp your whole spot To beat your whole crew The bunch of no knots Dissect you from the inner Then declare myself the winner Once the style clears You'll be real like Then I'm tuning the black door Contractor Attacking your back door You're trapped in my trash Come Back door, move back more. Smooth is for Lord, the trap door. This causing the cat chore for brothers who rap more. Check the shelling. Rock niggas redder than watermelon. Debris stricken. Rotated 2020 vision. Rap felon. How this brother will bad spelling. Pin shift. What unprecedented sharpness. Distributor. Local street corner contributor. Word inhibitor. Scientific pin positioner. Rhythm commission. DJs for real. He drives across painting like a cut movie. We perpetrate no fake, no fraud, no phony. 
Jurassic Masters of the Ceremony You came to solve it right before your eyes In fact, the old school flavor has survived like this like, 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 like. Improvise. Reminiscing of the wild style 75. Cause it's the brothers on the mic occupying the drum. We take the four MC and make it sound like one. And together we show you how to improvise. Reminiscing of the wild style 75. So whoever bought the tape, bring your butt right back. Cause you never in your life heard a cut like that. Hey, we flip fast, phone the grass, 45, record smash, hot weather forecast. It ain't nothing I never had. Make a move, never lose. Competition quick to choose. New styles, hot rhymes, guaranteed to blow your mind. Who is he? The subtle bit fanatic for unity. Demonstrating that ghetto diplomatic immunity. Well, I'm the style stimulus sound. Photosynthesis soup, but what the synthesis in the lab is And together, we show you how to improvise. Reminiscing of the wild style 75. Cause it's the brothers on the mic occupying the drum. Taking four MCs and make it sound like one. And together, we show you how to improvise. Reminiscing of the wild style 75. Cause it's the brothers on the mic in the place to be. It's the J U R A double S I C. All right, that was Improvise by Jurassic 5. And you know, for a song called Improvise, it sure sounds very well rehearsed. Ha 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 ha. I'm hilarious. I mean, clearly that was great, right? No, of course. I don't need it's I don't need to let you know that was a good song. <laughs> It, um, it's definitely a change of pace from the two tracks that we have listened to, but I think mm-hmm. that's what's uh, something that's attractive uh, to me for this uh, particular soundtrack is that it isn't one you know, style of music straight from start to finish, like a pulse pounding, you know, synthy, whatever, or you know, not to speak against any of that stuff, but you, know, you, get, um, you get an eclectic mix, and I think that's where video games started to go, especially sports games. You know, you see later on, you hear people talk about, oh, I got into this group because of Need for Speed, or I became a big fan of this because of Tony Hawk Pro Skater, Dave Miro, yeah, I was whatever. Just say, uh, you know, Goldfinger, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, you know. <laughs> exactly. See, it's 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 all out there. So, you know, I I think um, games like this were super important, not only to you know video gaming, but like, uh, you know, as you get older, I feel like you get away from the radio because the radio starts to play music that you're not. Um, it's not your style. So, Except the oldie station. <laughs> well, mm-hmm. I have a bone to pick with the oldie stations playing <laughs> alternative rock. But uh, we'll, yeah. we'll talk about that in another episode. At any rate, <laughs> at any rate, uh, fantastic song. I actually um, remember, a, a small side note, uh, one of the, um, not Lollapalooza's, um, Warp Tour. One of the Vans Warp Tour. I saw Jurassic Five. I had a friend who was very into them at the time. He was very into them, and I, I had no, I didn't care. But uh, I hung out with my friend. I was like, "Yeah, I'll, I'll wait with you while they get on stage and stuff." And I remember seeing some of the set and thinking, "Ah, oh, this is pretty nifty." But again, if you listen to Turning Tracks, you know that at that age, I wanted, it, you know, aggressive, heavy, angry. So you know, now I listen back and I'm like, man, I was really stupid and I missed a lot of stuff. So these guys are these guys are fantastic. I, I like I like a lot that they do. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I can't say that I'm a, a well versed in uh, Jurassic Fiveology, but uh, the, um, the, the this is a, this is a killer song. And while you're right, it is a a, a turn, a bit of a turn from the, the previous two tracks. It's not out of place. Right. Like, thinking of <clears throat> Dragula makes me think, now that's a very different kind of song from what we've heard so far. Yes. But this Jurassic 5 uh, really just kind of fits into a similar groove. Like, it doesn't feel out of place. It is definitely its own unique thing compared to what we've heard so far, but not in, a, not in an overly weird way. But really, the song itself, fantastic. Great pick. Love it. Yeah, Absolutely. So, next up, we have a song called That's Enough. That's what it's called. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is all I know about it, and apparently, that's enough. So, here is uh, our fourth track from Jet Set Radio, or Jet Grind Radio, That's Enough, 
Enjoy. actually remember this song i was one listening to it i don't remember it super well i just remember that coming at you voiceover thing i remember hearing this song this is not entirely unfamiliar to me so that's little something i remembered from jet grind radio <laughs> <laughs> i like this one a lot. i don't I like this one a lot i was i was uh definitely grooving a bit back here this was a you know, it's a simple bass line that repeats, but it's a really effective one that kind of like it's it's kind of crunchy sounding, like almost uh, like, you know, topping out or something like it's a it's it was a really cool bass sound and a very driving rhythm. I, I like this one a lot. Um, it. Huh. So. <laughs> So I love this soundtrack, right? Um, but I do have a problem with, like, any musician who samples and then is so repetitive with it. Like, I love 
techno and electronic music, you know, uh, groups like Daft Punk and, and so on, um, you know, and, and the avalanches. But, like, there comes a point when you're sampling it and you're looping it and I start to get, okay, let's let's do something different, right? Like, I get it, you know. Like, I, I understand what's the intention behind this song. But Mm -hmm. uh, I get a little bothered because it's so Um, heavy-handed. That's fair. By by midway, by midway, I'm like, okay. And I actually think, (coughs) excuse me, and I actually think I tuned it out for a period there and then kind of came back in towards the end of it, unbeknownst to me. Um, So, you know, that being said, uh, I do take some of this stuff with a grain of salt. Uh, Again, not bagging on the soundtrack, I just little personal pet peeve i suppose that's all okay yeah that, that, that's a fair criticism it certainly doesn't bother it did, didn't bother me in this instance uh i i know what you're talking about where voice clips get overused and they uh that has definitely bothered me in the past it's it just mm-hmm. didn't uh didn't get to me here i rather enjoyed it i like your repetitive blessings nature <laughs> maybe it's just that i'm extremely <coughs> tired but i thought the song was lovely Oh lovely, yeah, no. Lovely, lovely. It's a good song, just you know, yeah. a little pet peeve with it. Fair enough. Well, let's see if we can peeve your pets some more <laughs> uh, with our next our next track. Oh yeah, yeah. All right, so this is the last of the ones that Durak Pig specifically requested. We're looking at a song called "Humming the Bassline." I like the sound of it already. So let's go ahead and give it a listen. Enjoy. <laughs> say this is some menu music you can I definitely recognize this song i cannot place it though mm. it seems very I'm... menu-ish to me though 
Okay. Just because it's it's just because of how low energy it is. Not like low energy, like this is boring as heck. It's like it's not very driving. You know, it doesn't make you want to get up and spray paint things. I guess uh, it, it's <laughs> it's not a very high tempo song. Uh, this really just it reminds me of menus, but I, I could be wrong. I dig it though. Nice, nice, cool, more laid back groove. But I uh, I enjoyed it. Yeah, definitely. It's um. Not as intrusive as some of the other stuff. Um, it's funky. It's got that funky kind of like uh, the funky drummer from mm-hmm. uh, that got sampled from um, James Brown. Um, yeah. Yep. You know, I'm a pretty funky drummer. I haven't showered in two days. Okay. Um, that's a thing now we all know. Uh, no. <laughs> um yeah, it's a good track. I, I wouldn't be surprised if you were absolutely right by saying, oh, you know, this this feels like a, a menu music song. Because you're right, it's this, it's not as high energy, not as high octane as some other tracks on this uh, soundtrack. Yeah, it definitely has an energy to it. Like, it's... A, it's oh, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a cool tune. I dig it. Good picks, Duroc Pig. Super chill. Absolutely, let's, yes. Good picks. Let's see how I did. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. Again, I've got, I, I don't have much going on here as far as, like, where they came from. Uh, this next one is Upset Attack by David Soul. So this is the, um, I think this is the only other uh, licensed track that we're going to be listening to tonight. Today. Tonight. Whatever. It's really cloudy out now, and I don't know what time it is. Time has no meaning. Uh, so <laughs> Upset Attack by David Soul. I don't know that I'm overly familiar with this track but whatever whatever made me pick it i guess we'll find out if i did a good job so here's upset attack from jet set radio jet grind radio enjoy
right, that was Upset Attack by David Soul, and I, well, I know why I picked it now. I heard that super cool, like, ska rhythm there, and it's like, yep, sure, I'll listen to a song full of that. And I did not hate it. Uh, it, was a, <laughs> it was a good one. It's a good, uh, good, bouncy, bouncy, fun piece of music. I dug it. Very uh, The Specials, very Madness. Yes, um, very The Specials. Oh, my God. Yeah. Absolutely right. I think that's who I'm going to listen to today on the way to work. Special. Anyway, uh, yeah, uh, really solid take on on the reggae ska kind of yeah. uh, punk uh, tracks. And and if you ask me honestly, like punk ska is really the sound for the revolution, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know. No, 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 I have a ton to say about it. it. Wasn't an overly complicated song. There wasn't. Um, there was just enough going on in it that it made me want to. It made me want to move and groove. Um, yeah, I, I I dug it. Good good pick by me. Way to go, me. <laughs> one for one. All right. One for one. Toot my toot my horn here. All right. Well, then let's keep going to the next track, which is called "Sweet Soul Brother." Um, yeah, I I have no idea. This is fun. I love listening to songs I don't know. So here is "Sweet Soul Brother" from Jet Grind Radio. Hopefully, we all enjoy it. Certainly did reuse that one sound effect, that one effect over and over again, the the one vocal. So uh, how, how did it grab you, sir? Sweet, sweet. So no, uh, it was all right. It wasn't bad. It was very uh, a, a chill piece of music for this game. Um, I could see myself playing and kind of getting tired of hearing it, especially, you know, when you take too long in a level or something and the game, the music's running 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 mm-hmm. i could see myself getting tired of this pretty quickly yeah i was i was um, done by it by the time i was done with it by the time the track was over 
Yeah. Did not overstay its welcome yeah. here, but I agree with you. It's uh, went on a little longer. I probably would have been like, yeah, that's about enough of that. But I still really dug it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's not terrible. <laughs> it's high, high praise. Not terrible. Yeah, I like it. Let's I see. mean, well, let's see. We've got three left, so let's see if we can. Uh, let's see if this next track uh, takes it up a notch. This one is called Rock It. Not Rock It, like a rocket, but it's Rock It, as in a thing that you would rock. Uh, I do uh, again, no idea. So let's go ahead and give it a listen. Here is Rocket from Jet Grind Radio. Enjoy. of two minds about this one i really liked a lot of it but that mm -hmm. one main uh voice sample that they kept using uh looping the la 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 was very yep. abrasive yes like it really really cut through everything and legit hurt my ears to, to to listen to i had to turn the volume down um because it's so it's so loud in the mix and cutting uh, but everything else about this, I was really into. Um, I really liked the uh, 
kind of chorus sing, you know, like it sounds like a group of people singing stuff that was, you know, kind of being bent and, and stopped and started and, and fiddled with. I really uh, dug, dug the groove about the thing, uh, the, the, the whole tune. It reminded me a lot of uh, like the Go Team um, music and uh, this, it was, it was pretty wild, but boy, that one vocal track was really, uh, that, that one, that one kind of hurt. <laughs> yeah, it's a little rough. Uh, abrasive is a really good word um but musically like sonically musically it's really good it's a really good track uh, you know maybe 50 percent less uh sample right mm-hmm. um but otherwise it's still good I, I i'm with you though in in that respect it's a little grading yeah grading is definitely the word i, I i'm looking for there it's uh hit pretty hard but really I, I like i said i'm split on it because outside of that that grading vocal track i really dug this one a lot it had a really good good really good vibe uh, i do think it's hilarious that you just said the revolution the soundtrack will be ska and this is not that at all <laughs> no yeah, yeah, yeah quite literally people love it <laughs> uh but uh yeah really really interesting song i liked that one quite a bit Well then, let us continue to our next song. We have track number nine. It's called Funky Radio. Uh Uh-oh. Yeah, okay. I feel like I know what this is. Um... I don't know. I, I don't know. But there, I remember there's a there, there's like a, a DJ guy that yelled Jet Set Radio. Uh, yes. And I, I can't shake the feeling that that's, why, that's what this is and why I picked it, but... Uh, Maybe I'm wrong. Who knows? We're about to find out. Here's Funky Radio from Jet Grind Radio. Enjoy. Jet Set Radio. Radio. single day of the week, yo, come on.
Okay, that was Funky Radio, and uh, that was indeed pretty funky. Not, you know, traditional funk, but it had a good... had some funk to it. Had some radio. <laughs> Well-titled. Liked it. Yeah, I liked it. It was, it, was a, it was a good, solid groove. I dug it. Yeah. Uh, another kind of low-key-esque um, track. But, I mean... Again, it's a. That's what makes these soundtracks good. Is it's not just one thing over and over and over. So. Yeah, this one also struck me as some sort of menu type of situation. Like, I'm choosing something, not doing something. Right, 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 right. But a good, but a good groove. I think I picked this one because of its name. I'm 90 percent sure I looked at that and said Funky Radio. Throw that in the list. Because <laughs> the tune doesn't sound overly familiar to me. So. Well, yeah, that's all I got. That's not true. We got one more. Yay! Uh, track 10. Buddy. Our last track of the show is called Everybody Jump Around. This has got to be the one where the guy yells Jet Set Radio. I mean, it just has to be, because I feel like I must have picked a song that does that. So, let's find out if this is the one, or if uh, or if, I, if it's the last track after the credits or whatever. We'll see. Um, anyway, this is everybody, everybody jump around. I'm hoping for some high energy if it's called everybody jump around. So let's find out. Enjoy. Y'all ready to get funky? The most important part of dance is music. So now let us listen to the music and identify the beats. was too soft.
Hmm. I have a sudden urge to jump up and get down. Huh. Hmm. Hate when that happens. I'm very I feel so conflicted. <laughs> I'm very open to suggestion. Um, <laughs> yeah, I like this one a lot. I like this one a lot. I was uh, I was very, very much enjoying it. Again, it's reusing the, the voice samples a lot, but uh, this time it didn't bug me. I thought it was uh, pretty effective. What'd you think? Um, I like the music a lot, actually. It's got like a old, you know, hip-hop vibe to it that um, kind of takes me back to some of my youth. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I can't believe I just said that. Anyway, um, it's fun. It's a fun and a little bit funky. Um, I got to agree, the sample wasn't nearly as grating. Um, that's a part of it too, right? Like um, the actual frequencies that make up the voice in the sample. Right. Because like, I felt this was more rounded if if you want to imagine a sound as a as an, a concrete um uh thing is definitely more smooth you know those other ones the, specifically the one you were talking about was very grating it it was very grating it was like a you know a piece of broken glass or something you know yeah i mean I don't, I don't mean to get so you know dramatic about it but just for examples you know what i mean it was it was so. quite abrasive, but this was not that. This was uh, this was this was pure fun, and I had a real good time with it. Just like the rest <laughs> of the soundtrack, I had a very good time. This was a, this was an interesting pick, and not one that was going to wind up on my list. Um, Got to agree. It's a it's it's just a, a a game that I know that I really enjoyed, and the the soundtrack really matches the gameplay. It's a super fun game. I've never played its sequel, Jet Set Radio Future, on Xbox. I imagine it is also quite good. It's mm-hmm. a it's a weird thing because this series never really hugely took off, but Jet Set Radio Future was a pack-in title for original Xboxes for the longest time. So like it and Sega GT two thousand two are like these. There's they're everywhere. There's so many copies of them out in the wild. So, right. It's a, it's a it's a weird both a uh, extremely common yet not extremely popular game, which is weird. <laughs> it's it's strange, right? Because mm-hmm. it's such a cult, and yet I don't know. I I've seen it um, for the the I've seen the ports for the new systems, and I'm very tempted. I don't know what the price point is for me that would get me to purchase it, but. <clears throat> I've, I've been very tempted to purchase just to kind of go back and and jam on it a little bit yeah I'd also really like to I'm probably going to use some as background music I'd like to hear what the Game Boy Advance version soundtrack is because this game oh. the, this game was ported to GBA and I don't know much about it but just based off what I know of the Tony Hawk ports being as impressive as they were this was this was either a, a really cool interesting uh, you know downgrade type of thing um like a, a D make, as it were, or it's just awful trash. But given the track record of some of the Sega THQ stuff that was coming to GBA around that time, like uh, um, the the uh, Altered Beast Guardians of the Realm, the, uh, stuff of that, ex- Sega properties did very well on the Game Boy Advance. You know, Advance Guardian Heroes, um, mm-hmm. Gunstar Superheroes, uh, uh, Beast, uh, Altered Beast, like I mentioned. So. Of course, then again, Comic Zone was awful on Game Boy Advance, so I don't know, I'd be wow. in, I'm very interested in, the, in learning more about the GBA port. But either way, it was a fun, fun trip down memory lane to uh, enjoy some some Jet Grind Radio. You got any uh, any final thoughts before I wrap us up, sir? Honestly, I can't say that I do, but I will say that I really do appreciate the um, the listener interactions with both myself and Chris. It's clearly led to this episode, which is been very interesting for the both of us um so i mean you guys who are listening we really appreciate you i always say it and uh i look forward to continuing the conversations that we do have yeah then getting us a little outside of our comfort zone it's 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 pretty cool like uh you know we did that turbo graphics one last month we're doing this one this month and we're gonna do our um well, we'll talk about that in a minute, but you know, we've, yep. we've, uh, we're going to get back into the swing of doing a few of our more personal episodes, but we've got some more listener requests on the way, and that stuff's always fun. So, that's going to be it, and that is our show. Join us next time when we will be bringing you the annual Waveback Awards! 
Yay! Sorry, I, didn't, I, didn't, I missed my cue, sorry. <laughs> Matt and I are going to look back at all the great games we discovered uh, in the year of Our Lord 2022, and the music <laughs> that we liked best from them. Obviously, we're still not at a place where we can do what we were doing for a couple of years, where we attempted to listen to all the new video game music and then pick yeah. the best. That was a lot of work, and sadly, we just don't have that in us. But, you know, these are our personal game of the years. Uh, as far as music is concerned. And I definitely heard some pretty cool music in the games I played this year, so I am excited for that. Anyways, we here at the Waveback Podcast are incredibly grateful to everyone who listens, and we love communicating with you when we can. We have a couple of ways you can do that. There's the... Excuse me. There's the Geekade Discord channel in which we have a Waveback chat where we frequently discuss all manner of stuff related to video game music and whatever our next episodes are going to be. We also have a Waveback forum page over on Facebook. That's not really true. We don't technically have that anymore. I'm going to cut this out. In fact, I'm going to erase it from my notes right the heck now. And... <laughs> think. See ya. Of course, you can always still send us an email at mail at geekade.com. And while you're at it, check out all our social media channels, which you should totally follow, like, and subscribe to if you haven't already. Waveback and other Geekade podcasts are made possible thanks to the Geekade Patreon page. There, patrons can get access to a monthly podcast topic and recording schedule, get early access to most of Geekade's shows, including this one and more. If you've enjoyed our podcast over the years, follow the link in the description and give it a look. We really appreciate it. And finally, as always, be sure to check out all the other great content we have on our site over at Geekade.com. Matt, do you have anything to plug? At the moment, no. Go listen to Turning Tracks. Yes, which we're about to record. Uh, we're going to leave you to, today, tonight, we're going to leave you with this episode with this game's ending music. It's called Jet Set Medley. It's a medley of music from the game. Surprise! Uh, it's cool. I've listened to this one. I recognize this one. Uh, and I'm pretty sure, at the very least, this has this, the, the dude yelling Jet Set Radio in it. So, there it is. Anyway, enjoy, and we will see you next time. Thanks for listening. <laughs>
Sweet, sweet. 